Brandon Weikert, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Brandon, to begin, we saw Israel disappear from China's version of Google Maps, Baidu. What's the message here? Uh, well, China is doing what they always do. The hidden hand of China can be felt in pretty much every major conflict of the last few years, from Ukraine now to the Middle East to even what's going on in Central Asia. Uh, the China has been making bold moves, and they do these moves not overtly. Uh, that's part. I mean, that they can do that too. But what they choose to do is sort of these subtle moves, where they will send a signal to Israel saying, "Hey, we don't recognize your country anymore." Now, the, what's left unsaid is unless, unless Israel does something that Beijing wants. And so, uh, you know, but this is this is China signaling that it's getting more involved and where its sympathies lie right now, which is not with the people of Israel. Now, at the same time, China's foreign ministry is saying that ties with Israel are still solid. How should we read this? Uh, well, you know, the, there's a, a tightrope. Uh, that both sides have to walk because Israel also wants to have good relations with China because it's the second largest economy in the world. China is making bold moves geoeconomically to get more involved in the Middle East. And uh, China, for its part, very badly wants to gain access to that very lucrative high tech uh, sector in Israel. It's a way for them to backdoor and gain access to critical American technology that we have for the last several years uh, slowly cut them off from access to. So there's sort of this dance going on where China has a desire to isolate Israel on the world stage, to pressure the Israeli leaders, basically to make Israel less reliant on the United States and make the Israelis look more to Beijing uh, as a possible peacemaker in the region. And on that note, in terms of the Israel-Hamas war, China is calling for a two-state solution. How would that work, given that Hamas vows to destroy Israel? It's it's completely ridiculous, and the Chinese are they're out of their element if they're even being serious right now. The two-state solution is no longer viable. Uh, Gaza had the opportunity to elect a leadership democratically in 2006, and they chose poorly. They chose the Hamas, which is entire in purpose, as you note, is the obliteration of Israel. Uh, Gaza has a very fortuitous location by the sea. It should be the Singapore of the Middle East instead it's the Somalia. That's Hamas's fault. So as long as Hamas via, or rather Iran via Hamas and Hezbollah to the north and even Fatah, the rival party to Hamas, all of those groups are in hock to Iran. As long as Iran controls those groups and those groups are committed to Israel's destruction, there is no two-state solution. There, there can't be. And you mentioned China's involvement, either covertly or overtly, if they wanted to. What is China's here to gain? Yeah. Well, so they want very badly to basically be the dominant power in the Middle East, uh, the outside dominant power. Uh, and so they need to push the Americans over the horizon. They need to ensure that the Americans no longer have a leverage point over China. China gets a large chunk of its uh, oil and natural gas from the Middle East. And so the Americans right now, with all of their access to the Middle East, have the ability in the event of a conflict with China to cut off access to Chinese access to their energy needs. And so uh, by pressuring the Americans, by putting pressure on American proxies like Israel or the Sunni Arab states uh, through Iran, the Chinese can basically push the Americans out and force whatever proxies remain to become reliant on China to protect those uh, Middle Eastern powers from Iranian Roth. And that's what the play here is. They need access to the, or dominance over the energy sectors of the Middle East, and then they also want to gain access to the high-tech sectors in places like Saudi Arabia and Israel. Brandon Weikert, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me.